Hello, everyone. Welcome to Meticulous Talks on June 26th. I am Curse Accords. And I'm Hifrock on the move. Yep. Hifrock is uh, recording, uh, how would I say? On location? Well, kind of, no, not on location. Um, <laughs> not in his usual domicile. Yeah. That's why I might sound a little different because I'm, I am just from my tablet today, not at home at all. But you sound just fine to me. That's great. Yeah, uh, we've been off for a, <clears throat> excuse me, off for a little bit now, uh, four weeks, five weeks, something like that. Yeah, we missed one stream, and then the next stream, there was something else going on as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In the meantime, well, uh, the beta happened, or rather, is happening, I suppose. Uh, that was about two weeks ago now that it was released, I think. It was, uh, no, I, I think it was just one week. It's like five days, maybe six. Oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah. I have, I, that was the day that I muted the spoiler channel in Discord. And I haven't looked at anything since. So from here on out, spoilers for me will be initial vanilla reactions. Uh, Hitrock, you've been actively involved in the testing, I assume. Uh, not as actively as for previous sets, but somewhat, yeah. Okay. So Hitrock will have the uh, experienced reaction, maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> know the minutia of the cards, perhaps. Uh, yeah, so we've selected... Uh, it was seven total, right? Uh, yes. It was uh, one friend of each color and a resource. Right. And we're just going to keep on doing that for the rest of the spoiler season. Uh, Hitharak will take some cards from the beta, and I will put them into these slides while trying not to look at them, and then we'll do it on stream. But before that, there were four cards still that had been spoiled uh, before the beta happened that we hadn't talked about yet on stream. So we'll get to those first. Yeah. Yeah, so the idea here is that, like, since open beta doesn't really allow for, like, a spoiler season, we're having our own, like, mini spoiler season where I pick cards and Cursed has first impressions of them. Pretty much, yeah. Try to capture some of that excitement of the usual drip feed of, uh, well, at least, what we had been used to from earlier sets. Mm-hmm. All righty. All right, no? shall, we, shall we look at the true spoilers? I, I, yes, let us. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, this one was a long time ago now. Maybe four weeks ago, uh, whatever. But yes, this is the card that Bugle released, I'm pretty sure, right? Uh, wasn't maybe? And. I think main, yeah, main, like the troublemaker was Bugle's. And I might be wrong, though. Anyway, um, Wrath of Gilda. Cost, uh, flips for five, cost four, three blue and three pink. Uh, cost one less if your opponent has more friends than you. And it is frighten all friends, then dismiss all friends in the main phase. In um, the, uh, the most unconditional board clear that there's ever been. Well, that's not true, actually. School shut down is more guaranteed to clear the board off. Wait. Yeah, but... Uh, uh, is it, though? No, like, yeah. It, 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 if a friend can't leave play, school shutdown won't get rid of it either. Yeah, like... Like, if they have Brian in play, this card deals with that, because it frightens things first. Right. And then it dismisses everything. Like, one might think, like, oh, why frighten old friends when you're going to dismiss old friends anyway? But the reason is that frightening old friends also removes their abilities, mm -hmm. which can be really useful. Gets around uh, persistent. Uh, because. Uh, yes. For the reason yeah, that, uh, that you just said. First we, first, we take away all their abilities, then we try to get rid of them. Mm hmm. Uh, so, so the only things that are safe that can't be frightened. And can, yeah, which is not a lot of things. There have been a few of them over the course of the game. I think they're all in harmony now. 
Uh, yeah, I can't really think of one. Right. So this card is pretty much uh, party of one for, but for uh, pink blue, right? It has the same requirements, has the same cost. I don't remember what power party of one has. Uh, party of one was a relatively low flip, I think. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, exactly what it might have been four or three or something like that. Yeah. And pause uh, brings up Unity fifteen AJ, which is a good point. That one, yeah, yeah. Oh, party of one's five. Okay, fair enough. I, I you, you know, we're, we're going to get to this. Um, I believe with the next card, uh, but fond memories is a set that looks like it's going to have some degree of uh, references. To pass sets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so seeing all of the same numbers as on Party of One, uh, okay, fair enough. That's uh, may have been intentional. Yeah. This card is more symmetrical, though, right? Because uh, usually, like, even though we know that symmetrical effects aren't usually that symmetrical, uh, it, it, this card is still, like, more symmetrical because... It's mostly orange that can kind of await this ability, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this card isn't pink, uh, blue. So there's that. But it also removes more things than Party of One. So it has this like advantage and disadvantage at the same time. As well as the cost reduction, which you might get sometimes. Yep. Which you probably, like, you'll probably play this card yeah. when your opponent has more friends than you. <laughs> I, 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 well, there may be situations where, where, where you'd want to play it where you have more, but yeah, usually this is, you're behind um, and you need to reset your opponent, which you know, to be fair, blue and pink are colors that you wouldn't normally associate with that kind of board state, at least when you're playing them. Uh, yeah. Usually blue and pink is, well, they're the colors that are playing all the friends. So could be interesting to see what kind of deck this eventually ends up going into. Yeah. I mean, if anything, it's a really good sideboard card. Like, you would probably have it against Thorax. Very true. And you'd uh, want to board it out against Chrysalis, I might expect. Because uh, the thing is, yeah. like, going from experience based on Party of One, usually that was your whole turn, was just playing your Party of One. And if this is gonna cost eight or six, that's that's not good. No. All right, next card. Next card. Uh, so right, as I as I mentioned, um, there's some to, uh, some amount of uh, past references coming up in this set. We have Lotus, colorless, two cost friend. When this card enters play, choose one of your characters and a color. That character has that color till the end of the turn. What is this? What is this referencing? I don't know. <laughs> is it even a reference? Well, sorry. Are, are, okay, so are, are you being sarcastic or like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so naturally, I should argue that this card is colorless, and GP should argue that this card is white, right? That's how it works. That would be the expected outcome. Yes. So yeah, yeah. I, notably, I have been uh, so caught up in the memes that I forgot to to question if this is actually a good card or not. Um, and it's it's functionally just a Kevin, right? Well, I, I, it's a makeover on a friend, right? Oh yes, yes. That uh, it uh, could hit your main, so much more useful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it depends. Like the effect only lasts until the end of the turn, so it's like playing makeover, but also getting a two over body. Whether that's better than Kevin or not is situational, mm -hmm. because sometimes you want like a more persistent color, and sometimes you want the color for just one thing. That said, this card doesn't really beat rushed makeover. <laughs> True that, yeah. Although, oh well, just say to the flavoring people like yeah makeover on a friend fits this uh flavor design anyway notwithstanding the reference to aloe too that's that's really good yeah
Anyway, yeah, relatively straightforward card. Mm -hmm. It's another entry. Mm -hmm. And the memes are appreciated. Oh. I feed on memes. <laughs> um, the next card, next card, despite having less text on it, much less text on it, is probably the much more mechanically interesting one. Um, yeah, I think this one was revealed by Google, right? That's um, maybe I not. Maybe I, I don't know. Uh, GP says that. Um, uh, I already forgot the name of the card. Uh, Wrath of Gilda was Bugle's release, which I, I thought it was. Uh, anyway. Okay. Uh, the Maniac. Five power, one point. Villain, but not epic. So just to clarify, uh, being a villain means, well, exactly what you believe it means. Uh, when it uncovers, the uh, every friend at the problem gets frightened. Uh, but it is the epicness that makes it block both sides of the problem. So you will still be able to confront it, assuming that it's your problem maker. Yeah. I have been told a while back that this would never happen. And here it is. A villain without an epic. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing... Um, there's nothing... Well, clearly there's nothing in the rules that says this can't happen. Uh, it's... No. Sorry, go on. No, no, I wasn't saying. But, well, yeah, it, it's um, it's you. It, it's going to be useful in somewhat different places as your usual um, epics. Well, obviously, epics. This isn't going to go on a farm deck anytime soon. Um, no. But the villain uh, keyword is very great for interfering with the opponent. You. Um, yeah. Like it, for example. I mean, sorry. Go well, ahead. Well, yeah, I was gonna say like usually there's the villain chess, right? Where you know you play a troublemaker, the opponent tries to guess whether or not it's a villain, right? That's yes. Well, one of the classic kind of well decisions that you have to make when you see a troublemaker come down. And how does that change with this card? You wouldn't. I mean, you're playing. You can play it on problems that you still want to confront, but you still wouldn't want to play it where your friends are because that they're still going to get frightened. Yeah, I don't think it changes the villain chess. Like you're still, it's the still the same decisions here. Like, oh, did they play that troublemaker there? Because it's a villain, they have no friends there, or is it a regular troublemaker? Or, like, why did they move a friend away from there? Like, I think the chess doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in, in a way, this card is kind of like, you know, like a friend that entered, like, like the Twilight Pony Pirate. I think it's what's Twilight. Like, she enters play and frightens everything. And uh, this Troublemaker is kind of the same. It's just a uh, five power, one point Troublemaker that frightens everything when it enters play. Mm hmm. And since this is like a one-time effect of sorts, like it just happens and that's it. It's just a troublemaker after that. Unlike unlike epics, which are a little special. Right. It's a it's a, it's something of an interesting troublemaker for control because, um, well, it uh, it if it enters play face up, it's just a five power one point troublemaker with no text. Uh, it's all of its power yeah. is on the uncover. Yes. Um. Let's see. I see Utopia there. Farm uses this to give any epic villain. Um. The assumption being that you play them both to the problem and then turn over this one first. I think. Or what's the interaction there? Uh I mean, yes, you can do that. I think, but. Like, I don't think 180 is worth that. Or maybe it is. Like, 180 is a card for a farm deck, I think, is a big cost. Because, as f like, I'm not a farm player, but as far as I know, farm, like, aggro, like, has steam. And eventually it runs out of steam. And uh, that's why, like, cards in hand are kind of valuable. 
at least from what I find in farm. So I think like playing an entire card just to frighten things. No, nah, it, it could well, be useful in some scenarios. Yeah, like the the the, the, uh, the interesting thing about the face down troublemaker stack has always been that like you play them and especially if one of them's an epic, you have the option. Now, if there are friends there, okay, I'll unfrighten the villain. I'll uncover the villain first and frighten them, then do the epic. If not, I'll just uncover the epic, leave the face down uh, maniac there, and you know, make use of it later, perhaps. Yeah, but you might as well have like an epic villain for exactly the same purpose. Well, like, oh, if they have the friends there, I just uncover epic cards that is a villain, and if they don't have friends there. I uncover a regular epic. Like, I, don't, I don't think in, that changes in, much. Right? In harmony, sure. In in core, there are a lot fewer epics that are villains. Uh, the other way around, right? Oh yes, yes, you're right. I mean, there there is some, not all of them, but some. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. We'll see. Like, yeah, if farms deck will end up using this, sure, it will be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and well. I'll I'll say certainly the first thing that I thought of when I saw this card is that you know it's it's uh, it is the lowest rarity villain that we've ever had, uh, which means that you yeah, not many of them, but you could run into a few of them in your uh, limited draft as well. And villains in limited is a very yeah. different ball game. Yeah, I think this a draft could be brutal, especially since you usually don't expect like villains. <laughs> In draft. Good point, Utopia. Thank you. I, I forgot we have had rare villains before. Did we? I can. What card is rare villain? Uh, a Hui Zabo from Premiere. Which he... isn't he ultra rare? I don't think. Oh yeah, he's a rare. Yeah, yeah. He's a rare. I was thinking he was high rarity because, like, I like there was there was a foiled version of him. Yeah, you see. That's what I was... That's the thing. We're, we're, we're used to these opulence farm decks that are all foil cards and all shinies. And so you think, oh, yeah. of course, it's it's got to be ultra rare, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh, the T-Rick then from Crystal Games might also be rare then, right? I, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, still, good point on Limited. Uh, should look out for this card on Limited. I, I, it's a good pick. Mm -hmm. Problem makers are always good and limited. Villains, even more so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Trick was absolute right? discard. That's right. Oh, we oh. are just we, we're just off. We're today. terrible. Yeah. Anyway. Uh yes, and now for the last card that was released before the beta. Uh our first song of the set. Coming popular. Six flip, three costs, three white wreck. Text is a little hard to parse, so I'll, I'll, I'll go through this slowly. Um, gain control of an opposing friend with printed power 2 or less. Then, choose one. Either opposing problems lose and can't have abilities until the start of your next turn, or choose a resource, then each player puts a token copy of that resource into play. The double choose in there is a little, or at least what was a little confusing to me the first time through, but um, yeah. Like all songs, option to choose, but that game control of an unopposing friend is always always going to happen. This is not a multicolor song, but heresy is this not super rare? True, but yeah, this song is very interesting because um, it has two modes only, right? Uh, most of the I think all of the songs have like three, and. Yep. Um, and you you can kind of think of this card having three modes, but one of the modes is always active, right? It's the it has the first part, which it always does, right? And then you choose something else. I, I just had a thought. You now, uh, event processing, you do as much as you can and then stop. If the opponent doesn't have an opposing friend with printed power two or less, uh, do you not get the choice? No, you do get the choice. Like okay. you ignore the parts you can't do and ignore do as much as you do. can. Okay. So doing as much as you can would mean here choosing the mode here and doing that too. Fair enough. Okay. So 
one thing is that one thing that's um, interesting about this card is that the moment that like always happens, the gain control part has almost no relevance to the other two things that this can do, mm -hmm. because like controlling a friend and making everyone put a token copy of a resource is not really doesn't. Well, I mean, there are situations where having two of those things together could be relevant, but it's not immediately clear how that would play yeah. out, right? Yeah, and especially as it's an opposing friend. Um, can't, well, yeah, you can't count. Well, on your... I mean, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to take control of your own friend. <laughs> Fair enough. Yes. And opposing problems, losing ability also has like little relevance to taking control. Like again, there could be situations where both of those things would be good together, but uh, they're not intrinsically good together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to say, you, you you can think of situations where that might be useful. Uh, like well, getting control of an opposing friend is at the very least you're getting some amount of power on your side and take away some problems ability that's preventing you from confronting it. And maybe you get to square yourself a face off, but yeah, it's it's you have to think of of examples rather than mm -hmm. just kind of looking at it it's like oh yeah. Um, but it, it it is one of those rare cards that make problems lose abilities. Don't see those very often. True, true. And putting a token, each player puts a token copy of resource into play. What resource would you target with that? Uh, you can target any resource. Uh, so if it's a if it's a unique resource that your opponent has, then yeah, like a stick. Yeah, then their copy goes away, and you get a copy. Um, let's see. Is there anything else that fits? Like, I, like if it's non unique, I want to think of a resource that wouldn't backfire. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. It's hard. <laughs> if the opponent gets a token copy of a barrel, does that help them at all? Uh, no, no. I mean, they they would. I think they would get to choose a color, but that's it. Like for that turn. Right. If they try to return it to their hand, it will just disappear. Yeah. But I mean, I guess your token. Well, your token copy of a barrel might be okay. Yeah, like so. The thing here is, is that although as fun as it it is to speculate, like oh, my opponent might have this specific resource, and I could play this card than that. You're likely not going to build a deck with that in mind, right? That your opponent is mm -hmm. going to have something. Uh, so probably when using this card, you would either need to think of something you have in your deck, so something you might get reliably, or something that's in meta, like a stick. That uh, you can kind of rely that your opponent will have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, if you're duping one of your own hats, and you know you happen to have some some removal, I guess you just blow up whatever friend they put their token copy on. Uh, that's like pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think this ability is a little hard to use. <laughs> yeah, y y you do have to go in order, right? You uh, you gain control of the friend. Before they put the yes, token copy yes. the resource into play, yeah. You first take control, and then you choose one and do that thing. Right. Uh, and then, yeah, as, as Grand Paws points out, uh, if you have resource removal in play, or that you're in, in, intending on playing anyway, then easy enough for you to just uh, get rid of it. Uh, Say you have a Big Mac in play. That's easy. Then, yeah, it doesn't matter at all what re uh, what copy of a resource they get. True. Yeah, I, I guess with Big Mac or, like, Torque Range. Well, uh, Torque Range is multicolor. But, like, a repeatable resource removal like that, yeah, I can see. The point there. Uh, question from Utopia. You're talking about Herd of Adoring fans, I assume. Um, that's the one that has to go on to, like, it's, uh, yeah. The, the question is basically about resources that have restricted attachments. Um, and 
Yeah, you still put them on the host, I'm pretty sure. Right. And then... Like, like, we, we, we already have Stygian, which makes a uh, token copy of resources the same as with Stygian. But with Herd of the Doring Fans, this wouldn't work because uh, Herd of the Doring Fans, is, its effect is specifically when you play that card, not when you put it into play. Right. But, like, if a... If a token copy of resource is, is put into play on a friend that wouldn't normally match its uh, attachment restriction, does it fall off during pre-priority processing? Okay. Well, first of all, I don't think you like you can put it into play. So, I don't think you can uh, put it into play on an illegal like friend that doesn't meet, meet re the requirement. But even if that ever happens, if like for some reason there is a resource attached to a host that doesn't match the description, it will be dismissed by the game by uh, during the priority processing. Okay. An example of that would be you play, uh, you know those resources that turn to friends from Absolute Discord, mm -hmm. I think it was. So, or it might be some other set. Uh, if you like play a resource that attaches to a friend while they're friend, and then they cease being friends at the end of the phase, those resources will just go away. Right. And they are dismissed by the game, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're dismissed by the game. OK. First day forward. Uh, hope that answers the question. <laughs> all right, next card. Well, yes. Now, from here on out are all the new ones, cards that I've never seen before. Hello, Bugle, by the way. Good to see you there. Uh, yeah, I've never seen it before. I guess all of you in the chat probably have, if you've been paying attention to the beta. Um, hey, Throck has. I, I know that the next card has the eager as a keyword. I caught sight of that as I um, um, was doing the slides. But besides that, that's it. All righty. Helpful home. Two cost. It's rather two power, three cost, three rec. Eager. Uh, which, remember, was... Well, there's reminder text there. At the start of your turn, once per turn, if you have a friend eager to home, you draw a card. At the start of your score phase, you may exhaust this card to contribute its power to confronting your friend. Oh, okay, it's just uh, nurturing nature. Yes, it's a um, callback to Canterlot Citizens from mm -hmm. uh, Sequestria. But except now it has, like... So it costs more, but it has advantage that it will draw you cards while it's at home. And this card will probably be at home. You want it to be at home to the degree possible, mm -hmm. yeah. One disadvantage to control of citizens this card has is that it counts towards home limit. Control of citizens don't count. That's right. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, I guess suppose there are, like, flavoring could change the card's traits. And like so, for yeah. example, if it becomes a critter, there are ways to make critters not count against your home limit. Mm -hmm. Oh, if it's a Pegasi, ooh, <laughs> very true. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the flavor plan for this card is, but uh, we'll see what traits it will get. But they, it's I always like the cards. Like I like Control Citizens and New Showing Nature. They made like a lot of things interesting. Like the fact that yellow is with this card would be really bad at face-offs, right? But uh, good at confronting problems. Mm -hmm. Now you get a real benefit from having this card at home. Yeah. The only problem is that it doesn't really stack. Uh, like control at citizens, you just play them and stack them at home. The more, the better. Because it didn't count towards home limit. And the more you had, the more power you'd have. But this one, I don't know. Like, you probably wouldn't want more than one of them at home, to be honest. Well, I... That's honestly a good thing if we have cards that, you know, maybe yellow needs to become a color that makes you make difficult decisions about what you keep at home. That's a that's an interesting design space to perhaps explore. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any like specific I think all of the colors have to deal with the, like, mm, what do I keep at home? Well, I mean, uh, control decks especially because they have a lot of like cool things. And once aggro goes through their wall and does a double face up, now you have to think about what cool things you're going to keep. True. It can be a struggle. Yeah. 
And because you only get one eager proc per turn, you're, yeah. Only going to yeah. want to... Yeah. Ha ha having more than one of these in play does have diminishing returns. Um, mm -hmm. The first eager like card we had, was it also yellow? I can't remember. Uh, it might have I been yellow. I feel like it was. Um, so, I it, cannot remember. Right. Yeah. It, 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 pink, yellow. Thank you, Bugle. Okay. Yeah. No, it, it didn't feel like a yellow only keyword. And I, I think we probably knew that there weren't going to be uh, color restricted keywords in this set anyway. Um, but uh, fair enough. <clears throat> we'll see. Yeah. Seems like a pretty cool friend. Yeah. Um, notably, if it if it wasn't clear already based on the fact that we had six, well, seven cards taken, uh, Hithrox chosen one from every color. So yeah, um, I chose one friend from every color and one resource at the end. Right, and I one think multicolor resource. You gave them in reverse, uh, reverse number. Yeah, order, that's that's I how I. So I was like taking the cards and saving to my tablet, and then I just uploaded them, and I uploaded them in reverse. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. So oh, we're yeah. going to yellow, white, and then purple, and so on. Gotcha. All right, which means the next up is the white one. Yeah, it's um, blending in. Mm -hmm. uh, two cost, two power, two white, wreck, harmony changeling. As this card enters play, choose another one of your changeling friends. Card enters play as a copy of that friend. You um, wanted more timbles? That's, I mean, well, it's a two cost timbal, I guess, but still, yeah. Uh, the, uh, I, I've always wanted more timbals. I've always wanted that deck to work. <laughs> yeah, now you ha can have even more timbals. Mm -hmm. And if you, like, you can play Heart of the Ring fans on this card, and we'll put a token copy of this card, and you can copy something else. Mm -hmm. You can you can really go compiception <laughs> with changelings, which makes sense. That's kind of what changelings are about. Yeah, yeah, it, it's uh, it's pretty good, pretty good flavor. Uh, does have to be a changeling that you target, so a little bit limited. But there are pretty good options there. Um, well, yeah, we, we have a lot of good changelings. Uh, we have. Remember that Ocellus, uh, which had like something for every color. Uh, yes, yeah. The that's the. Wait, is is that one the transform one? No, it's not the. Tra oh. oh, it might be the transform one. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I just remember it had something for every color, mm -hmm. and uh, copying that will be pretty fun. It's like a big cost changeling. Another uh, another cool card is the Evil Twin. Also, high cost changeling that copies other things, banishes them, copies other things. Although I'm not sure if you play this card, will you get evil twin or whatever it's copied? That, that, that I'm not sure on. I think you'll just get evil twin, so that might not be as good as I think it is. Oh right, you'll miss the you'll miss the as trigger on evil twin. Yeah. Okay. Yes, because this card is also as. Right. That actually, changelings have a lot of as triggers. That kind of cuts down on the possible targets a lot, actually. Yeah, but there's still like a lot of really good changelings out there. Mm -hmm. uh, it will, so, yeah, just all the stuff, like most of the stuff in Friends Forever that Hall have pretty good when enters play triggers. Uh, yeah. You're effectively, yeah, you have three. Your deck now has three sort of wild card copies of other changelings that you might want, which seems pretty good, generally speaking. Mm hmm. So, yeah, cool to see Harmony changeling again. It was kind of sad that, like, the Harmony thing kind of ended with, started and both ended with Friends Forever. Mm hmm. So, it's cool to see more of this. Bugle with a good point that you, uh, you can copy the Thorax Tricorn. And since, uh, wait, uh, Thorax Tricorn turns off unique, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. 
and so you're able. So to yes, have... you you can copy Torx Tricorn totally. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh yeah, pretty good looking card. Uh, purple is next up, I think. Yeah. Okay. I like this card. Oh well, it is purple. I thought I shouldn't. Have, I, I should. It is purple. That. Yes. Uh, okay, cheater, cheater. One power, one cost, three wreck, unicorn, chaotic. Interesting that we know it's a unicorn already. Um, chaos, when this card is flipped. I see. Uh, when this card is flipped, you may put it into your hand to put a card from your hand into the flip zone. Or flip zone. Sure. If I have a face off here, you may draw a card, then put this card on top of your deck. Ah, interesting. Okay. So it's kind of like Star Soul Research, but for every card. Uh, yeah. With a few extra steps, I suppose, but yeah. Yeah. So, it, draw a face off here. It places itself on top of the deck, and then you replace it with some other card. Draw a card, it goes to top of deck, it gets flipped, other card goes into play. Interesting. And And so, cards in the flip zone have the flipped property, right? Yes. Yeah, so if the opponent has like a changeling throne or whatever. Right, but the chaos ab uh, the, the chaos abilities don't trigger anyway. Yeah, okay, so... Yes, uh, it specifically says that they don't trigger. Although I don't know, like there are some continues. So some of the chaos abilities trigger, right? Like when this card is flipped. But some uh, cards say that like while this card is flipped, something is true. Like like Scootaloo, which has like while this card is flipped... Uh, players can't score points in this face-off, if you remember that one from Absolute Discord. Right, yeah. I think that those would still work, because while this card says that they don't trigger as a reminder text, which is true, because those because you don't flip that card, right? Mm -hmm. But I think they're still counted as flipped. Right. Y you don't flip it, but it becomes flipped. Yeah. I think that's how that works. And I believe... Uh, GP can correct yeah. me. Uh, GP and Bugle, I believe, both saying that that is how it works. Yeah, this is a really cool card. And it costs one, and it's uncommon. I like it a lot. Right. Yeah, so actually, if you have one of those non-trigger chaos abilities that you had been setting up on top of your deck, this is actually a way to make it happen. All right, wait a second. My brain's going faster than my mouth here. Or rather, my mouth's going faster <laughs> than my brain here. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I just went off on a tangent there that did, that wasn't going to go anywhere. I, I'm yeah, just, but the way, wait, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm just thinking like you know you had yourself set up, you have a card that you want to flip on top of your deck already. You wouldn't want to use this ability then, right? Because you want to flip the card that you want to flip. Yeah. Yeah, but if you but you may draw a card. You don't have to draw a card. Uh yes, yeah. But if you have a card in your hand that you really wish was good, uh, was going to count for your face-off, then that works. Or, or a card that you really want to put on the bottom of your deck for whatever reason. Yeah. Also, I'm not sure... So this card says you may draw a card. But it doesn't say you may put this card on top of the deck. I'm not sure if that's... Do you have to put it on top of the deck all the time? Or can you choose to not put it? Um, because, like, does the May here apply only to draw a card or for the entirety of the text after May? That's a fair question. Uh, it's not an if you do, it is a draw a card. Yeah, it just says, like, uh, you may draw a card and then you do something else. But, like, if I choose to not draw a card, I think you still do something else. Okay, Grand Pause, uh, the, the intent is if you draw, then do the other thing. So. Okay. Maybe I should say if you do, then put this card on top of the deck. Yep, All right. that's the standard template way to do that, I think. Hey, this is what beta's for, right? Yeah. Although I usually like, start really reading the text during streams. Like I usually read the cards and see, like, oh, this card is fun. And only then, like, I realize, like, oh, wait, this text that 
what happens actually. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, should we move on to pink? Sure. I, for, for, for what it's worth, I, I don't know if you have inside knowledge on this or not, but mm, I, I can see this being a Trixie. Yeah. Fair enough. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I don't know if it's a Trixie or not. I'm just saying that every unicorn should be Trixie. Fair enough. This card is cool, but this card uh, would be a pretty cool Trixie. I don't mind it being a Trixie. All right. Nice card, yeah. Uh, I, I I actually missed this one when I did the upload first, so I, I uh, have even no idea, less idea what this card is. Uh, screwy Redo. Three pink, three cost, two rec. Hasty. Players can't confront this card's problem unless they have at least three characters at that problem. That is. Uh, that's exactly Screwy's text, right? Just with the Hasty. Is it? Uh, I mean, okay, so... For those who don't know, I, I'm, I'm speaking of the ultra rare pink card from Premiere, Screwy, uh, which I think that was the text. Oh, only oh, I on, only opponents. Okay. Uh, I don't remember ultra rare Screwy. The only Screwy I remember is the one that switches control. Right. Um. Yeah, I, I'm. 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 I'm pretty sure that's the reference being made here. Um, right, and it was only it, it was at least three friends, not at least three characters. Okay, so some small changes. Um, oh yes, bugle. That's right. Yeah, the uh, the friend the friend you're thinking of, Hithrock, was is Screwball actually, not Screwy. Ah, that's true. Well, they both has Screw in their name, so that's easy true. to confuse. That's true. Um, yeah, it was a it was a well, I it, uh, as far as I'm aware, it was a card that. Pretty much never saw play the old Screwy, uh, but had a really interesting, cool ability and is a lot more useful when it's hasty. Yeah, you can stop single face offs with it, you can stop confronts when you really need them to stop. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I can see a lot of control. Like, like if we had cars that are, like were hasty eccentric, right? And people sometimes used them and saw them as useful. Well, this is even better. It's kind of hasty vexing, so to say. Mm -hmm. And it, it, if I think about it, um, the aggro decks especially often don't confront with more with uh, th uh, three or more characters because it's usually going to be a low confront problem. Often enough, your ma uh, their main's going to have a staff on it too. So, like one or two um, characters, that happens a lot. It depends on the kind of the aggro deck, I would say. Uh -huh. So some aggro decks really pull all the friends. True. But yeah, at least three characters is like a nice middle point. Right, and this this does affect you as well, uh, although it you know it at least does mm -hmm. count itself. So if you play it to a problem that you have two characters there already, then you're good. Yeah. Yeah, sy symmetrical effects are not so symmetrical. <laughs> that yes this also helps against uh yellow decks like uh, that use nurturing nature mm -hmm. because uh it's not a character with the problem so it doesn't really matter if it contributes its power or not absolutely yeah yeah it seems like it should be useful like i can like yeah uh sideboard card for sure because, yeah, there are certain decks mm -hmm. where this will be a lot more useful than in, uh, for others. Um, but against yeah. some decks, probably very useful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, cool little card. Um, probably useful in Limited, too, since it's an uncommon. Oh, yes. You see it fairly often. Not too often, but fairly often. Yeah, it, it's... Uh... And uh, the effect is really useful for Limited, I would say. Good cost for power, regardless. Yes. Um, and yeah, very, very relevant effect on uncommon. Absolutely. Mm hmm. So, pretty solid pink card, I was saying. Hmm. Alrighty. All right. Orange. Orange. Uh, resource coupon. Two power, two cost, three rack. Stubborn. 
exhaust this card in the main phase to pay one AT less for the next resource you play this turn. Okay, uh, Cloud Chaser for resources, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which, pretty straightforward. Uh, orange is a color with a lot of resources, usually. A lot of cheap resources, too. Um, you know, but... um, I, I don't know about cheap, but resources... Uh, like, I mean, uh, orange has some expensive resources too, like desert road. I mean, that's that's true. Uh, I was thinking a shovel, uh, and my brain hadn't and gotten to the it? rest. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, this card can let you play shovel for free. Mm -hmm. The only problem is that, um, like, you don't really play resources all that often, right? It well, just... I mean, there are colorless resources too. Uh, yeah, fire like friendship speech. and speech in them, yes. Yeah, but still, it's not that often. But for a common with good cost efficiency and stubborn, uh, that's a fair effect. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want another factory jack, would we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair point. Um, let's think about how many. Like most decks don't run that many resources. Uh. Six, nine, more than that. Here. I would say most decks run at least six resources, which like free speeches or free fires. Ah, free monumental sticks. evil. Thank you, Bugle, for saving me. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> what is monumental evil again? It, it, it was the one um, from last set, the, the, the dilemma denier. Ah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, that's another one cost resource for orange. Anyway. Okay. That, orange has cheap resources. <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah, like I think I think every deck would have like at least like five resources, like maybe three speeches or fires and two sticks or something like that. So there's at least some cards in the deck that uh this card would affect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, in orange, you can go like pretty far with how many resources you run. You have your desert roads. You have, uh, especially if you play control, I think. Although or mid range. Well, I guess orange has resources for everything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a simple, straightforward card. Uh, ex so you'd expect it to save you probably. 3 AT over the course of the game, I'd say, if you're running a normal yeah. deck that doesn't have too many resources in it. Um, yeah. I think it's not a stretch that it will pay for itself, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And given that it's stubborn and exhausting, it is no big deal. Still a friend. Mm -hmm. In Harmony, you, you, you uh, just get free barrels all day long. Oh, yeah. If a free barrel every turn, I love it. I should reprint the barrel. If all of the neutral color fixing stuff, you know, it didn't exist already, I wouldn't be surprised to see a reference barrel in this uh, in in the set. But like, you know, uh, colorless uh, color fixing stuff has been in every set, so it's it's hardly a reference to barrel anymore. Okay, so here's the idea. It's a barrel, but you can run six of them in your deck. It's like part <laughs> of the card. <laughs> oh, that, that is not an illegal design, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, you can have, like, we already have Pakwaji, so. Ideas. Anyway, a simple, solid, straightforward card, which is what orange is all about, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Next uh, card? Blue. Beer feeder. One power, four cost. Ooh, better be good text. Three wreck. When this card enters play, you may frighten a friend here. If you do, put a number of plus one power counters on this friend equal to the frightened friend's power. Oh. -hoo. Oh. All right. So if you want it to be power neutral, it has to be at least a three power friend, which that's. Um, there are a lot of those. Mm hmm. Uh, and Sorry. If, uh huh. If you're hitting anything higher than that, then you're getting good value. Yes. Uh, which, well, fours, fives exist. 
Uh, yeah, but they're rare. Although, like, when you think about uh, cost efficiency of this card, you have to remember that it's not only about power. It also frightens a friend. Mm -hmm. So it has, like, a soft removal in it. So, uh, like, even if you get a free power friend with it, and you get free power counters, it's you still got more than just paying four for a full power friend. You right. also frighten their friend. Normally, frightening a friend is worth two AT thereabouts. Um, yeah, a little bit less than two AT, I would say, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, around there. Um, and so you can think of this as a two cost friend. I mean, you still have to pay the four regardless, but two cost equivalent in value. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, could be good. Uh, I, my mm -hmm. mind immediately turns to kind of situations where you're okay with frightening your own friends. And I, it, mm, there aren't that many. I don't think. Yeah. One thing that's interesting about this card that's like, you don't really see power counters on blue very often. Uh, that's true. And this is just trade blue card. It's nothing else. No, yeah, not mixed with orange or pink or anything. Just, uh, I mean, you know, the, uh, the the design doesn't really work if it's temporary power, so it yeah, it had to be. All right, I want to see the next card. Uh, which? Yeah. Sorry, I, um, I I was thinking about something, but I don't think I have enough of a um. Uh, enough of a uh, answer. Well. Anyway, yeah, next card. Sure thing. Yeah, it's uh, by total coincidence. It's an uh, orange-blue resource. Hmm. Rainbow Factory. Five power, two cost, orange-blue, as you say. Tom, your friends have diligent one. Pretty good. Uh, immediate exhaust discard, remove two plus some power counters from one of your friends at a problem to frighten an opposing friend at that problem. Two from one friend, okay. It's frighten. like that blue card we just so synergizes with this or something. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that uh, you could say so. Um, is there a wait a second, okay. We've had a number of factory cards in the game so far. Have they all been exhaust this card and remove a thing to do a thing? Hi. So there's the Sweet Apple factory you're thinking of, right? That uh, gives you AT uh -huh. uh, for removing power counters. But I can't think of any other. Oh, there... there's also Amusement Factory, mm -hmm. right? We've got yeah. recently. Does that remove power counters? I'm pretty sure it removes a. I'm pretty sure it removes a thing to do a thing. I, I don't know if it's I think power it counters specifically. something back into the deck, right? Right. Doesn't it shuffle? Yeah. Uh, bugle to other. Uh, r remove a friend to give an AT. Right. I. I, okay. I don't know if that's actual. If that's intentional design from Sims part, but it, it could be. That uh, the fact. Yeah, it would be all... cute. Go back. Yeah. Um. Anyway, two plus some power counters, right and an opposing friend of the problem. Yeah, they, uh, great synergy there for sure. Um, great synergy with, you know, two plus some power counters on one friend. That's not hard at all in orange. There are lots no. of cards that will do it. Lots of you ways can just have Rock Hoof that generates power counters every oh, time. Oh, boy. <laughs> that is good. And plus you're like, Offsetting, like, especially, like, say Rockoff is, let me see, how, how does he go again? One, two, four. If he's eight, and you have a seven power friend in play. Yeah, you remove two, and then you remove be, two, yeah. and uh, proc him up to 12. Like, Rockoff is good. <laughs> mm hmm. And, like, any other card that, like, uh, consistently gives you power counters is good with this. And uh, the first part of the, like, the first ability is great as well. Like, all of your friends have Diligent 1. That's pretty strong, I would say. Oh, yeah. Oh, if you, use, limited. If you use it with um, Festival Caterer. 
The uh, the one that says whenever you would put one plus uh, power counter, put that many plus one instead. Oh yeah, that's Neville Jack, the Ultra Rare one from yeah. Sequest. Then all of yeah. your like your Big Macs, the fight uh, that remove resources. Like a- any oh. a- any ability that says put one plus one power counter is making it eligible for use with this card. Yeah. That might be a bit of a stretch. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, like the, the, the thing you're getting out of this is that you can fight on a friend every turn, but that's uh, that's pretty good still. And this the resource is not unique, mm-hmm. so you can have many of them. And uh, many of them stack as well. Your friends have diligent one would stack. Right. Now, it is location specific. Uh, the friend has to be at the same problem as the friend that you're targeting. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah. Move two plus. Oh, yeah. Again. Yeah. And it's still very good. Um, so notably, can't hit friends at home. Which. But other things can, though. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your home is not safe against the orange. <laughs> I guess so, yes. Um, yeah, cool card. And uh, yeah, I don't want to overlook that your friends have diligent one thing. That is... Yeah, like that by itself is pretty good, I would say. That has the ability to snowball real hard. Uh, orange decks tend to be great at winning face off. Notably, not usually don't have that many friends in orange, I don't think. Like, you tend to have, well, less than yellow or pink or blue, say. Um, but yeah, still good, for sure. And mm-hmm. I mean, this is orange blue, so you've got some number of blue friends as well, um, which will probably appreciate that diligent even more so. Yeah, you could have like Pegasi, uh, like that uh, that resource that expunged, spawns, spawns a bunch of uh, tokens. You could use that as well because every single one of those tokens will have diligent. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, if you can splash this into orange yellow. And so now all your tiny friends stay at the problem <laughs> and get a plus one power counter on them. Ouch. Do the things that say, like, they stay after a face off, do they care about printed power? Uh, like pretty trading sure, water? Pretty sure trading oh. water is printed power, yeah. I think. Amazing. Maybe not. I'd have to go look again, but it, I, I think it is. They have a pretty cool resource for blue orange and more of those frightened synergies. Yes, treading is printed. Thank you. Uh yeah. Yeah. I uh I kinda wanted um uh to see some more frightened synergy in blue. So good to see it going in that well, direction. You got two cars right there. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. All right. Um I think that's that's everything there is to say here. Mm-hmm. That is uh, the end of our first. I want to avoid uh, saying cut because I know that means something totally different in the in the context of testing. First slice um, of cards. We uh, kept it to seven in the hopes of keeping the stream a nice reasonable length. Um, we'll probably go something similar to this. About a dozen cards per stream. Um, mm-hmm as we're moving along. And this format seemed to work pretty well, so I think we'll keep up with it. Uh, Meaning that in two weeks' time, we shall be back with another 12 cards from the beta. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Sorry, I I see you there, Bugle. No, that is... At at the rate uh, that we do it, 70 cards would take us like four hours. Because that's about half a set, right? Yeah, I mean... Do you remember our last review stream? I think that's accurate mm-hmm. with four hours part. It was it was eight We've hours been for the like whole set. For six hours? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Ah, okay. That I didn't know, Grandpa's. Thank you. Um, larger than New Dawn. That is making me somewhat scary. Or, uh, All right. Ten hours stream. Get prepared. I guess so. Does... 
Does YouTube have the limit on upload times anymore? Is it still a 10 hour up? I, I don't I don't think so. I think you can upload as much as you want. Okay. Or maybe maybe it is 10 hour, but I, I don't think we'll reach that far. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um anyway. Um Thank you, everybody, for coming out. I know the stream was announced on something of short notice. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Um, let me find the YouTube link. Oops, that's not my server. Uh, if you want to watch any of our past uh, material or catch this stream, if you missed a piece of it, on... Uh, Monday is when we do our uploads now, so there it is, over on YouTube. Um, otherwise, we'll be back two weeks from now with about a dozen more cards to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, so until then, I've been Cursor Chords. I've been Hiprock. And we'll see you in a fortnight. Bye! <laughs>